So we're going to continue on uh, with exercise 225. Uh, we're going to switch from the exterior renderings that we've been doing to an interior rendering, but we're going to keep it day rendering. Uh, the truth, though, is as soon as we move inside, it's nice to have some supplemental lighting. It's not as dramatic by any means as doing the night render, but it's still relevant. So we're going to stay in the day for today, um, but switch our view to be inside. Uh, so I'm going to walk through that process. I'm going to point out uh, one other thing that has come up a fair amount uh, in talking to you individually about creating uh, like a lampshade or, or something like that. So I will make a new light to use uh, as well. But I want to spend a little bit of time talking about how do you, how do you get inside your building and start to try to integrate um, your, your lights. So the first thing is that if you're inside the building, there's no reason to uh, keep all of the grass and stuff that you have outside. Uh, so I have my bunch grass layer, which was right here as part of the rendering. We're going to turn that off because we don't need it. Uh, and then we're going to spend a little bit of time really kind of uh, getting inside this building. And it takes a little bit of, uh, of, of playing around to figure out what the right view is. I'm going to get down inside the building here, uh, hopefully in this this room, something like that. Um, and so if we switch here, let me go into shaded view so that we can see what it looks like. I can also switch into rendered view and get a little bit better sense of, okay, I'm looking at that particular corner of my room. If I wanted to, to adjust, let me switch back. I find it easier to be in the shaded view when I'm, I'm playing around with what, what view to be in. Um, you know, if I wanted to be looking through so that I saw more of the stairs, uh, this might not be a bad view to have, though I need to zoom in a little bit. The other thing that you'll find is when you're doing an interior uh, rendering, a lot of times you'll want to change your lens length to be a little bit wider. So at least an 18 millimeter, um, you're going to get start to get some distortion on the sides. But uh, this is reasonable at, at 18 millimeter. Um, and it's going to take a little while of really dialing in what's the right uh, view to be in such that you're not too far away, but you're definitely inside this room. You notice this, if you ever watch HGTV or whatever, they always put the corners with these, the, the cameras in the corner with these extremely wide angles so that they can see the people as they're walking through. So let's say that this is the view that I ultimately want. I have a little bit of a staircase. I'll be able to see through the windows a little bit. Uh, I've got a little bit of a window over here. It works for me for right now. First thing that I want to do is make sure that I save my view. So I'm going to go to the little um, triangle next to my view here, go to set view, named views, and I'm going to save this view and we'll call this interior render 01. I'll go ahead and click save. Uh, that lets me come back to this view down the road. Always useful as I'm, as I'm messing around with things. Uh, and then the next piece of this is I really, I want to install uh, some lighting fixtures. So I already have a can light. I'm going to start with that can light um, that I created last class uh, to light up this corner of the room. So I'll go to File, Insert. I could also go to Edit, Blocks, Insert, Block, Instance. It's the same thing. Uh, and instead of bunch grass this time, we're going to be picking that light. So let me go back to um, my can light. There it is. I'll go ahead and click open, and when I click OK, I do want to make sure I embed and link so that I can update it if I want to, and I'll go ahead and say OK, and it'll come in, and the, the challenge here is always placing um, it, and so what I do is I tend to put it right on the corner, uh, right there, and then I can move it in both directions to get it in the right position. So let's move it um, four feet in this direction, so let me tie, or two feet. And let me turn on ortho. And this is one time where actually disabling your snaps can be helpful. So I'm just going four feet in that direction, and I want to go four feet in the other direction. So let me quickly, or two feet, excuse me. Right, come on. And two feet that way. Okay, so I have the light uh, established. If I zoom in on this light, though, Right, my ceiling goes through the light fixture, so I'm going to have to do a trim. Hopefully it'll trim out, but I can't make any promises that it will. So let me go ahead and select the surface here. No, excuse me, select the block instance. Let me go to trim. And we'll attempt to trim the surface, which it worked, which is nice. So I have my little light here. I still need to install my spotlight, just like we did before. So last class was a precursor practice for doing this uh, in your actual model. 
Um, uh, lo and behold, my V-Ray toolbars aren't here, so give me just a second to load up those. Uh, why they don't stay in this computer, I'm not quite sure. Ah, hold on a second. Sorry, you guys have to bear with me for just a second. Sorry, I had to load the Q drive on this, which is a little bit different than the Q drive you're used to. Uh, let me go back to those tools. I've got my toolbars. And let me go ahead and open them off the Q drive. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to go ahead and create a spotlight and I'm going to follow the same kind of general strategy here where my diameter is going to be two feet and my height is going to be one foot but a lot of times I'll need to switch into one of the side views to be able to do it. Okay, one foot, Let's zoom in, there it is. Okay, Then we'll move back here and I'm going to move my spotlight, move vertical, negative one foot. There it is. Uh, now it's always useful when you start to get into this sort of uh, stage to create a master layer oops, that is lighting and then a sub layer for your different types of lights. I tend to create a different sub layer for each of my types of lights because I can select all the lights at once. Though it works if all your lights are going to be the same uh, so if all your spotlights have the same wattage and the same general uh, size, it's easier that way. If you have different sizes, you break down spotlights into I have you know, some 40 watts and some 30 watts or something like that. It just makes selecting them easier. So uh, this is a spotlight. And I'm going to change my object to be on that layer. All right, there it is. Now we'll go over to properties and we're going to make a few adjustments here. Um, we want to make sure that this is in watts. We want to make sure it's an inverse square decay. Uh, my color is, of course I don't have it written out. Um, what was it? 214.170. I think. I think that's it. And so I'll go ahead and say OK. 30 watts, there we go, the rest of this is fine. I have my light fixture, let me jump back to my interior render 01, there it is. Got my light in the corner. Now, when we start to do renderings like this, where we've got a lot of materials, a lot of the glass, a lot of stuff going on, um, when you start your renderings, it's always useful to do very small renderings, just to make sure that the lights and stuff are working correctly. So let me go um, to my output here. And I'm going to make sure that I get my view aspect of what I'm seeing because that's the view that I want. So I click get view aspect. There it is. I'm going to lock my view and then I'm going to make it really small. So right now it's only 640 by 320, so it's small. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my system. I'm going to make sure my distributed rendering is on and I'm going to click on my host. Now, I know that this group is all going to work really well, ET103. 1 to 20. So I'm going to type in uh, this, even though it takes a little bit longer because I know that these are all going to work. So um, I am computer 1 already, so 103 ET 103-2 3, sorry, 3 being off here. There we go. Six. 
So this takes a little bit of time, but it'll make the results a little bit cleaner for me. And I can go all the way up to 20. Um, I'm going to just do a couple more. Okay, so I've got there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, resolve those servers. Let me check them all here. Let's go bigger. There we go. There we go. And I'll go ahead and say okay. And so now I have those on my distributed network render ready to go. And I'll go ahead and start the render and see how it looks. All right. And remember, I went small first to see. Uh, a couple other things I should mention while it's waiting to pull this render up. I did apply a white sheetrock type texture to my interior walls. So I have a separate layer for interior walls and ceiling um, so that those would be ready. Um, those are applied through the layers. So even though we have the network render, it still is a little bit slow, so we'll just have to be patient. So while we're waiting for this render to, to go, um, I did grade the topography. I have yet to print out your grade sheets, though I will do that um, shortly. Um, if they're in the back, they have grades written on the bottom of them, so you can see them. The comments that I wrote will be on your grade sheets. I just have to go print them out. Uh, there were three people that didn't put their names on them. It's impossible for me to tell which one is which. So if you, if you don't find it in the back, it's probably one of these three. Come up and put your name on it, and then I'll grade it. Okay, but there's no grades on these yet. Okay, so it did just finish its pre-pass. It's going to go through and do its final pass, um, hopefully rather quickly. And there we go. Uh, so I recognize, of course, that it's hard for you to see on the projector what this looks like, uh, but I do have a very distinct set of halos here uh, that represent this light fixture. So my light is working. It's providing me good interior light. Uh, and what I'm going to do from here is to spend some real time uh, adding a few more lights, getting a few more of these shadows uh, before I do any high quality renderings. I do, however, want to mention a couple of the things that I think are, are important. Uh, I ask you to find two to four places where you're going to put interior lights. Um, so we'll, we'll add a few more lights to this particular scene. Uh, there are some other things that I have yet to talk about uh, completely during one of these renderings, and they're called channels. Uh, and it's important at this stage when you start to get a little bit further along 
to select a few of these channels. There is a tutorial that, that walks through the most common ones to select. Um, it's in all of these drawers and it's called um, VFB channels. Uh, and these VFB channels by no means are critical, but at the same time can be extraordinarily useful if you're going to do any Photoshop post-processing to your images. Um, for example, the alpha channel here um, will give you just the background in black or white versus the foreground that's been rendered out, which lets selecting uh, like the sky, for example, and making an adjustment on the sky really, really easy. Um, so I usually include that. The Z depth is also a fantastic one, uh, which I usually have selected anyway. Uh, the Z depth will create a grayscale um, based on how close your objects are to the camera, uh, which you can then use in Photoshop to do a blur, so you can blur the background uh, so it's not as sharp. So there's a lot of these flexible things. Um, you can do material ID uh, and it will color code your rendering for um, which materials are applied to what wall so you could select everything that has a certain material really easily. Um, so there are a lot to do with your post-processing. Um, if I were picking right now, I would turn on uh, on the VFB channels, I would click on Z-Depth and I would also click on Alpha. Those would be defaults, I would make sure that I selected those. Uh, and you can play around with some of the other ones um, if they end up being kind of necessary. Um, the material ID being a, another particularly good one. And we'll go through these a little bit more um, as we go along, but I at least wanted to point out turning on the alpha and turning on the z-depth. Um, when I do my next rendering, I'll show you where you save those and what they look like. So they're both turned on right now. Um, the next piece of this that I promised is that I would show you how to do a lampshade um, because that's another common type item that, that people tend to want. So I'm going to go and open up a brand new Rhino file and I'm going to build a lamp from scratch. So let me go, no thanks. Um, go away. And I want to make sure my units are correct because I wasn't paying attention. And they are in inches, so we're good. And let's just build a very simple lamp for right now. I'll start with a base. Let me do a cylinder for the base here. Start at zero, zero. Um, my diameter, we'll say, is foot. Uh, the height will do one inch, something like that. Let me do another cylinder. And we'll start at the center, the upper center here. My diameter is going to be three quarters of an inch. And my height, I don't know, we'll make it four feet, something like that. Okay, now I want to make a shade that goes over the top. So once again, I'll do a cylinder. And I'm doing this in, in very basic, you know, I could spend a lot more time working through this here. Uh, let's say this is a diameter of 8 inches and a height of 12 inches. There we go. Let me switch my view into shaded mode so that we can kind of see this. You can see that I'm building a basic lamp, okay? Nothing too fancy. Uh, let me go ahead and explode this because I don't want there to be a top on it and I don't want there to be a bottom on it. And I'm going to move this down slightly. So let me move vertically uh, by negative two inches or so. Uh, I do want these to overlap slightly, but I don't want the rod to go all the way up because I'm going to ultimately put a light right in the center here. So, but I, depending on my view, I want that to appear that it goes up inside the, the light fixture. Okay, so now it becomes a matter of assigning some materials. So let me go ahead and go to my layers, and I'm going to clean up my layers. So the first one, we'll call this floor lamp. And then we'll create a sub-layer for the materials. So a sub-layer, we'll call this uh, base. And we'll create another sublayer for um, shade. And I should probably call this FL shade and FL base. For clarity, for floor lamp, shade, and floor lamp base. Let's get rid of the rest of these layers because we're trying to pare down. And then I'll go ahead and load up some materials. So we'll load a material. And I will pick metal again. 
And I'm kind of into shiny, so we're going to do a nice shiny chrome. Why not? And I'm also going to... Uh, okay, so here comes the next part of it. So we can put chrome on the base layer. There it is. Let's say, okay. Now what I want is... Sorry about that. I want this to act like a lampshade, where it has some, some color, but I want the light to shine through. And I'm going to do that using a special kind of material uh, that's called a two-sided material in V-Ray. So I'm going to click on my material editor again, and I have to create a couple things. In order to do a two-sided material, I have to create what the outside needs to look like. And you could do this using any known material that you want, uh, or you can just do a basic color. I'll do two options so that you can see the differences. Uh, the first one is I'm going to do a basic color. So I'll create material, standard, and we'll call this tan, for lack of a better term. And I'll say OK. And I will then apply a tan to it. And we'll say OK. And if I were to preview it, it looks like a basic tan material. Okay. I could also instead load a material and let me get to my Q drive, materials, fabric, and I don't know, for fun we'll do a, a red woven fabric. So if we preview it, there it is. Okay? So I can pick any material that I want, but I'm going to use it in a special way. So I'm going to go to scene materials. I had to load these first. Then I'll right click and I'll say create material and it's going to be a two-sided material. Okay? And the trick here is that on this two-sided material, and I'll call this lampshade, FL lampshade because it's a floor lamp, it's going to give me the option to pick a front material and a back material. Okay? I want it to end up being transparent, so I'm going to leave the back material blank. blank but I'm going to pick a front material. So I'll click on this dot 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 and I will pick from the list that I want tan. I'm going to do tan first um, for what we're seeing. There's tan. right? Uh, and then let me double check one thing really fast. I should have pulled this up before. I want to make sure I get the settings right. So it's 8.16. Okay. And I'm going to control the translucency, right, with the color value. So in here I suggest 80, 80, 80. We'll give that a shot, see how it works. So see that where it says color? Instead of being black, I'm going <laughs> to type in 80, 80, 80. Right, which is kind of a dark gray, and I'll say OK. So I have tan applied, right? I have lampshade here. I'm going to apply, if I preview it, we can see it looks just the same. Okay? I'm going to apply this to my material. So let me apply material to selection, or excuse me, to layer, and it's going to be the shade. I'll say OK. Now, given how I'm doing this, um, I'm going to go ahead and save this as my floor lamp. So let me go to File, Save. Call this floor lamp. And I'll click save. I'm going to go ahead and open that scene that I used last class so that you can see how this works. So this is what I was working on last class here. Uh, so the settings are basically set. And I'm going to go to File, Insert. And we're going to pick that floor lamp. That I just saved. I say Open. OK. Embed and Link. OK. And there it is. 
do a few little moves here. Move. Move it away from the wall a little bit. Move it over a little bit. Okay, so there it is. Now that I'm in my scene, I want to put my light inside it. Okay, so let me look down here and let's go into either an x-ray mode or uh, you know, wireframe mode. And I'm going to insert a point light inside it. So let's create a point light. And I'm going to put it right there at the center for right now. I'm going to select my point light and adjust my light quality here. So my color was 255, 214, 170. If I remember correctly. Okay. We want this to be in watts. 30 is fine. Okay. Then I need to move this vertically. So let me also move. Oops. Move. Oh. Move vertical. And we'll go negative four inches. Not a little bit more. Move vertical. Negative two inches so that it's in the center of this. Okay. Then I'll come over here and I'll take a look. Under my layers, we should have the floor lamp coming in. It should have chrome on it and it should have the floor lamp material applied to it. So if we go ahead and render, give it just a second. And of course, my bulb is dead, right? So if some of you discovered this, sometimes you get a bad light. Uh, I just got, got one. So rather than resurrect it, I'm just going to delete it and create a new one. There it is. Try this again here. Uh, 14, 170. 30, 40 watt, inverse square, all right, do a quick render before I even move it, make sure it's actually shining correctly this time, yeah, I can already tell it's shining correctly by that upper corner, so we'll close it, we'll move it vertically 6 inches, negative six inches, there it is, and now we'll go ahead and render it again. And what kind of tan material was that? That was a fabric? I just, uh, this was not the fabric, this was just a tan color. I wasn't doing anything particularly fancy. So it wasn't really material. But it wasn't really. It was just color. So we'll let this finish up so you can see it. Okay. So it's really not all that spectacular yet, right? But I'm getting a nice bright inside, not much on the outside. So let's go in and start to adjust some of these materials. Now the materials came in, so I'm just going to adjust them in this scene versus going back to my old one. In reality, I should go back to the old one. Uh, but I want to save the trouble of the updates and what have you. So I'm going to look here. We've got floor lamp lampshade that's here. Uh, we also have coming in. There's the chrome. Oh, look at that. Rhino didn't chose not to bring in that material for me. So let me go ahead and load the material uh, that I wanted to begin with. And th oh, there it is. There's tan. Okay. So here was my original tan material. Here's my lampshade. Uh, I said 80, 80, 80 on the color. Let me drop that down to like 30, 30, 30 and see what happens. Say okay. Again, when I preview it, it doesn't really change a whole lot. Okay. But we're going to go ahead and close this and we'll do the render again. Not 
shining very much, which makes me think that it's possible that my uh, material was flipped. So hold on one second. Go to this. I'm going to type flip, which takes the object, which one's the back side versus the front side, and I'm going to flip it, and we'll see if that corrects the problem. Go ahead and save. You flip the shade. I flip the shade. And I realized that I accidentally adjusted this back. So let me go 30. All right. And let me try to render again, see if we get better results. Before you had the tan color on the outside and nothing on the inside. Right. And so for whatever reason, it's it's not giving me the glow that I want out of this. So let me let it finish for a second. This should be glowing a lot more. Interesting. Um, let me try to figure out what I did wrong. That's fine. That's fine. Let's try changing this to the red and see if we can get a result out of the red. Did I darken it instead of lighten it? I might have done the wrong. try this one more time, sorry. I think I was going the wrong direction in the translucency value. It should have been lighter gray. So let's give it a shot. Okay, something is not taking correctly because this is not. This happens, right? You try to do something and you do it live and stuff completely doesn't work. Well, this may be the kind of thing where I'll let you work for a while and I'll try to figure out what went wrong. Why it's not loading up correctly.
Okay, well obviously I have to figure out why this isn't working um, because it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I will turn you loose to start working on your interior rendering. Remember to save your view and then I'll call you back once I figure out what I did wrong and then we'll go from there. So whatever I was doing uh, in terms of solving this, uh, the material wasn't coming through as the block. So I had to explode the light um, to, to access the material. I have no idea why it wasn't applying correctly, but it is applying correctly now. Uh, if I view this in um, rendered mode, no, it's still not showing it particularly well. Um, let's go back to shaded here for a second. Uh, so this, I ended up playing around with the, the settings here a little bit. Um, in the lampshade, I moved this color back up. It's at 60, 60, 60. I could probably go back up to, what did I say, 80, 80, 80. Um, and that'll work out okay. I did have to flip the shade. I don't know why. Uh, and I picked the red fabric. For right now, I'm going to switch back to the tan so it looks a little bit more like a normal light shade. Uh, so I've got the normal light shade. If we preview it, it'll look like that. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and render it. And we'll see a little bit of translucency. There was the old one. Uh, and a little bit of glow from the... Uh, the lampshade itself coming off. Obviously the inside of the lampshade being a little bit lighter uh, than the outside. Right. And so that's that's much more in the look that I wanted. If I want this to be more translucent than it currently is, um, I'm going to go to my uh, materials here and on this FL lampshade I'm going to change this color. So we'll go up from 80, we'll try 120, a little bit lighter. We'll go ahead and render it. This is this kind of a process does take some trial and error to get what the settings uh, should look like, uh, and so this should lighten up the light shape a little bit more. If that's still not enough, we'll try it even a little bit further, uh, and more and more light should be coming out of that. So let's go ahead and exaggerate that a little bit more. I'm just going to drag this up, be a lot lighter there, and we'll try the render again. Okay, but it gives you some some sense of how you can create this. I don't know why it's not lighter yet. So anyway, um, obviously I'm struggling with getting the lampshade to look the way that I want it to, um, but that's how you would create a lampshade uh, in your overall uh, design. Okay, so I will, I will again turn you loose. I, I just wanted to kind of clarify that at the end uh, and in the hopes that it would make things a little bit clearer.